So I promised at the beginning of the chapter that we talk about refrigerators, air conditioners, and heat pumps, and here it is. Define the refrigeration process. State conservation of energy for this process and define its coefficient of performance. This one looks very similar to the definition of a heat engine that we talked about a couple of sections ago. Here's the definition. A refrigeration process, like we talked about before, uses work to extract heat from a cold reservoir. So here we're at a, at a cold temperature. Here's the hot temperature outside the fridge. We're trying to drive that heat in the direction it doesn't want to go. Heat wants to go from hot to cold. We're going to do work to drive this heat out of that cold refrigerator and put it into the room. So it's extracting heat from a cold reservoir and depositing the heat to a hot reservoir, which is in this case the room. Air conditioner, same thing. We're trying to um, drive heat out of the interior of the house so that we can cool the house. It's going in the wrong direction. So this is how, how it looks uh, schematically. We're trying to input work so work goes into the system instead of coming out of the system like a heat engine. And we're taking heat from the cold reservoir from the interior of the fridge and we're trying to drive it out the hot reservoir. Well conservation of energy looks exactly the same as it did before. Um, before with the heat engine all these arrows had reverse directions. But now um, the input energy is the work plus QC and the output energy is QH. So what we've done is replaced the, um, this what used to be the input is now the output and what used to be output is now input. The work done plus the heat taken from the cold reservoir. But the equation is, exa is exactly the same. So you just have to remember uh, for this as well as for the heat pump that we'll do in just a minute, um, QH is over here by itself and W and QC are over by themselves on the other, or together on the other side of the equation. Now, uh, what about the um, coefficient of performance? It's not called an efficiency, it's called a coefficient of performance. What do we want to maximize here? We want to maximize the flow of heat out of that refrigerator. We want to get as much out heat out of that refrigerator as possible so we can lower the temperature. And I want to do the minimum amount of work. So I'm going to maximize that heat that I'm extracting and minimize the amount of work. And so that's the coefficient, so-called coefficient of performance for a um, refrigerator. And to remember it, you just have to think, well, what do I want, what do I want to get out of this refrigerator? I want to get as much heat out of that refrigerator as possible. And so that's the one that goes in the denominator. And what do I want to minimize? I want to minimize the amount of energy that I, that I use up in the form of electrical, um, usually refrigerators are run with, with electric, uh, electricity. I want to minimize the amount of work that I do. All right, so um, an air conditioner. We're trying to take um, heat from the cool room and drive it into the hot outdoors. Now you can't just take, uh, and it's an interesting question, if you take the, um, the air conditioner and just set it in the room, then you're kind of, um, it's not gonna work. The, the, you're going to drive that heat through the mechanism. You're going to have to do work, and you're going to drive some heat, but the heat isn't going to go outside. It's going to stay in the room. So your whole room is going to heat up. Um, same thing inside of a refrigerator. We've got uh, the interior of the refrigerator is cold. We're um, 
driving it through the refrigerator unit, trying to um, expel heat to the outer doors. And then we're doing work by uh, electrical energy. Uh, and as I just said, you can't beat the second law of thermodynamics. You can't, you can't cool your kitchen by leaving the refrigerator door open. You'll, you'll warm your, uh, your kitchen up that way. Sorry. And you can't cool your room by putting the air conditioner on the floor because then it's expelling all that hot air into the room itself. So define heat pump. State conservation of energy for the heat pump and define its coefficient of performance. A heat pump uses work to extract heat from a cold reservoir and deposit heat to a hot reservoir. If you look at the definition that we had for uh, refrigeration process, it was exactly the same. Exactly the same. A heat pump does the same thing as a refrigerator, but a heat pump is different in the sense that you're trying to accomplish something different. Using a heat pump, you're trying to, um, in fact, I've got it, I think, in the next slide here. A heat pump uses work to make heat from the wintry outdoors flow into the house. So we got cold outdoors, and what the heat pump is trying to do is to take heat from the cold outdoors and pump it into the house, just the reverse of what it would like to normally do. Normally, the heat would flow from the interior of the house to the exterior spontaneously. So you have to do some work to force it to go in the other direction. So it's really like a refrigerator, except the out of doors is the interior of the refrigerator, and the inside of the house is the exterior of the refrigerator. But in this case, for a heat, heat pump, you care about the warm area. You care about moving heat into the warm part. So that's reflected in the um, coefficient of performance. This is different. This is the same. This is the same as a refrigerator. But this guy is different. What I want to do to maximize performance is to get the most heat possible into that high hot reservoir. The hot reservoir is the interior of the house. That you're trying to heat. And this is actually a picture of a heat pump. It looks very much like the condenser for a refrigeration unit or an air conditioning unit, and in fact, you can use a heat pump as an air, a heat pump in the winter to pump heat from the outside to the inside of your house, and during the summer, use that exact same heat pump to pump, um, uh, to, to operate in reverse and, and take um, hot air inside of your house and push it out. So a heat pump uh, can be used both as a heat pump to warm your house in the wintertime and to cool your house as an air conditioner in the summertime. Uh, an ideal or Carnot heat pump is used to heat the, a house at 294K. How much work must the pump do to deliver 3350 joules of heat into the house on a day when the outdoor temperature is 233K? So this is ideal. This is Carnot. This is reversible. Used to heat a house. How much work must the pump do to deliver um, this many joules of heat into the house on a day when the outdoor temperature is 273? So reversible, remember we talked about the uh, efficiency of the Carnot engine. It um, and we argued that the, uh, that the two heats, the cold reservoir and the hot reservoir heats, must have been proportional to the temperatures in the cold and the high res uh, hot reservoirs. You can solve that for QC by multiplying both sides by QH. That's what you get here. And then you plug that into the... Um, let's 
let's see. Yeah, the, uh, the equation of conservation of energy is QH equals W plus QC. So we've, div we've subtracted QC from both sides, plug this into here, and um, factor out a QH. So this one becomes QH minus QH TC over TH. We factor out a QH here and here. That goes there, times 1 minus TC over TH. That's what's left over. So finally, uh, the work done, we can plug in the numbers. We're told that we have 3,350 3, joules of heat, and 1 minus TC over TH is 239 joules. So that's how much work the pump has to do to um, deliver that much heat into the house.